when you talk about the kidneys, you actually know that there are two organs that are virtually located behind us. They are closer to our back than the front. So if somebody comes with a kidney problem and I need to take a piece, you know, to find out what the problem is, I go from behind to be able to take a piece to look um, at. And the question is that, um, how do they look like? So the kidneys are bean shaped. So they are like the beans that you know, the one that you have been eating with your plantain, which you enjoy the most, I enjoy it too. And indeed, looking at the image, the kidneys are bean shaped. And when the urine is made, there are two of them. I mean, when the urine is made, it goes through these tubes. It comes into your blood. That that's where you hold the urine for a couple of um, hours sometimes. And then you'll be able to pee um, your urine out. So if we get a fair idea of how the kidneys work and all, it gives us a fair understanding of um, what it does and how we probably uh, will present with the various symptoms. So now, yeah. what do the yeah. kidneys do? I have a feeling that you or know so well that it's the kidneys. Um, could, you please, like um, could you please mute yourself so we don't disrupt? And um, if the host can also help mute them, I think I'll be excited, right? What do the kidneys do? They help us to urinate, all right? So the kidneys are the organs that helps you to make urine. Now, the kidneys also help you to balance a lot of things in your body. So most things that you eat, now it's the kidney that de determines that, okay, you've had too much water, let's pee the rest out. Or you've had too much potassium, or you have too much this or too much that. It actually controls all of that and you have a less of it, it tries to keep it so you can function appropriately. And it also serves as a sieve or a filter. So anything that the body needs, it keeps it. What the body does not need comes out. And that is why it is very essential when you, we look at the urine, we are able to tell the things that are in the urine that probably are useful for you. If they are in the urine, then chances are that your kidneys are not functioning the way we want it to function. And this is what most people don't know, but the kidneys help us to make blood. What do I mean by that? The kidney is the organ that tells the rest of the body when the, uh, the blood level goes down. Now listen, the part of the body that makes blood, make more blood because the individual has very little blood. And that is how the kidney makes more blood and ensures that your blood levels are always normal. And that is a major function because when people come with kidney disease, more often than not, they are not able to make enough blood and that's they are weak and they feel sick and all of those things, symptoms that you see. And then another major uh, function of the kidney is that it helps us to control blood pressure. Now, if you are a young person and your blood pressures are high, the first question I would want to ask is that how well are your kidneys? Because more often than not, if your kidneys are working well, they ensure that the blood pressures are always well controlled. If the blood pressures are high, then chances are that your kidneys are not functioning optimally. And it is very important that, okay, you might have hypertension in your family, but with hypertension, hypertension eventually sometimes can cause kidney disease, which we're going to talk about very soon. So don't take your hypertension for granted. Ensure that your hypertension is well taken care of all the time, all the time. And again, the kidneys help the body to have strong teeth and bones, okay? So calcium and phosphate, these are major things that control how strong mm -hmm. our teeth or our bones are. And mind you, it is the kidney that does this control. So that is why when the kidneys are not working well, your calcium levels will be low and your phosphate levels will be high. And these are the things that we know the kidneys do. And the kidneys are such an amazing organ because they do all of these things in our bodies, okay? So let's be mindful. And again, the final touch is the fact that the kidneys actually help to get rid of a lot of waste through our urine, which we normally know. So if your kidneys are not working well and you're not peeing well, then you're accumulating all these waste in your body and you run into trouble. Now, is kidney disease a problem? Globally, one out of 10 of us have some form of kidney disease. And indeed, it's such a major problem. If you count any 10 people, I see about 65 of us on the call right now. So chances are that about six of us, one way or the other, have some form of kidney disease. Now, it is even greater, the situation in Africa. Our studies show that about 14%, even some later studies show that about 15.8% of Africans have some form of kidney disease. That is alarming. Any 100 people you see, about 14 or 15 of them have some form of kidney disease. And indeed, what is the situation like in Africa, uh, in Ghana, sorry. In Ghana, the situation is 13%. So 13 out of 100 of us have some form of kidney disease. This is so alarming. It is so alarming. And in Ghana, if you are to assume that we are about 30 million, some 4 million people in Ghana have some form of kidney disease. When they have the disease, we should ensure that they don't end up getting failure. And that is why we are having this conversation today. 
What are the trends that we are seeing in where in the hospital that I work? That is Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Now, what we know is that over the past years, every year our numbers are going up. Indeed, I've not updated the slide, but the numbers are going up all the time. And that is the one thing you should know. Now, on admission, what we know is that our outpatient basis cases have virtually quadrupled. So four times our OPD cases have increased. I go to the clinic and I cannot close because you keep seeing patients and keep seeing them. Now, on ad the people who are admitted has, has tripled, basically. So you have more people uh, coming with kidney disease three times as compared to about 10 years ago. And the worrying aspect is that about a third of the people who come in on admission with kidney disease will die right on, on the ward. And I would have to sign death certificates because they cannot afford dialysis. They don't have the wherewithal to be able to sustain themselves on dialysis. Now, those I discharge whom not because they are well, but because, of course, they are at least stable enough to go home and that we want to see them on outpatient basis and we don't see them again who die are not part of this statistics um, in some study we did where we looked at the 10 year uh, case of um, kidney disease in the teaching hospital. Now, the risk factors of kidney disease are enormous, and that is why we need to talk about it. And indeed, what we actually know is that sometimes through no fault of yours, you might be born in a family with somebody with kidney disease. And indeed, if you have a family history where people are getting kidney disease, you need to ask yourself, are you at risk of kidney disease? And I believe you are, and you need to check your kidney function often because if things are deteriorating, there's something that can be done uh, for you. Now, kidney disease also varies with age. The, the older you are, the higher your risk. But the point is that the risk of kidney disease actually starts from our mother's bellies. So if you are, your mother does not take good care of herself when she's pregnant with you, you don't grow up well to maturity. Now you either be born earlier or you'll be born with a very low birth weight. When that happens, you realize that the full set of, um, uh, 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 the full set of cells that your kidneys are supposed to have, which are about 1 million in each cell, you are not able to have it. And that what happens is that you are already starting off uh, being shot in the foot because you have less to start off with. As you grow, you are getting diarrhea, you are getting vomiting, you are not getting good nutrition and all. And then eventually in your adult years, now you are getting probably prostate disease if you are a man, or you are getting infections like HIV and all if you are uh, uh, or HIV if you are a man or woman, or you are getting maybe fibroid and bleeding a lot. All these risk factors eventually would end up with you sometimes getting kidney disease. So the point of this slide is that uh, kidney disease risk factor increases with age. Most people will say the risk is higher above 60 years. But in Ghana, majority of our patients come around 46, 47. So from 40 onwards, the risk is high, in my opinion. And that is why I wrote this article, which is again available online for you to have a read, born too soon or too light and kidney disease in Ghana, where I talk about the fact that if you are born premature or you are born early, we are born with a low birth weight, your risk of kidney disease is actually very high. Now, sometimes people are also born with abnormal kidneys. So all these images I'm showing are very different kinds of kidneys that people are born with. The common one we tend to see which one they grow, we see is the polycystic kidney. Now, polycystic kidney is actually a condition that has a, a, you are born with, but you will not show the signs until you are getting older from 20 years and above. And you have all these cysts that are sitting of these fluid filled spaces that are sitting in your kidney. Now, this is a surgeon standing behind a, a polycystic yeah. kidney that has been removed. And what you notice is that the kidneys are very big. In fact, this that you see are actually one, two kidneys in a patient. So oh, the point yeah, is that polycystic like kidney can be this big. And oh, that is why we need to be watchful. If you have a family history or somebody dying from kidney disease, check your kidneys because for all you know, you also have polycystic kidneys so we can prevent progression. Now, have you had any of these before? Diarrhea, vomiting. Have you had um, work in the hot sun, sweating with no water available? Have you one way or the other had malaria, enteric fever, and so on and so forth? All of these conditions will cause you to lose a lot of fluid from your body, and there's a hit on your kidneys. If you don't manage it well for the kidneys to recover, or you keep getting these over and over again, then your risk of kidney disease later in life increases. And that is why we need to be on the lookout. And now the other issue is that now what do we do about this? Most of the times people don't even know that they have the condition. And when they come in and they come in so late, 
They come in so late that we are not able to investigate thoroughly to find out the cause. So we now cap this youth, uh, people as kidney disease with cause unknown because we actually sometimes don't know clearly why they are coming with the kidney disease. And these have been um, talked about severally in a lot of publications. So in Ghana, we need to also look at that. And again, that is why I wrote an article again that was published in Graphic Online saying why most causes of kidney disease in Ghana are unknown. And I try to uh, de uh, discuss the things I'm telling you about right now. Hypertension is always a big problem. And it's always the situation where when somebody comes with kidney disease and hypertension, we are actually not sure which came first. Is it a kidney disease or the hypertension? So it's like the uh, chicken and egg situation. We are not too sure which one came first to stand in the uh, front of the queue. And indeed, hypertension is a major cause of kidney disease in Ghana. When I'm talking about hypertension, I mentioned if you are younger than 40 years and you check your blood pressure and it's higher than we expect it to be, don't take it for granted. If you are asked to take medications to control it, don't take it for granted. Don't worry that, oh, they say blood pressure medications. When you take, you are going to become impotent. Your libido is going to come down and all of that, and you ignore. Because if you are not careful and to discuss with, with your doctor, you run into trouble where your kidney functions will run into trouble because you don't control your hypertension. So hypertension is a very common cause of kidney disease in Ghana and the rest of the world. And that is why, again, I have an article that I wrote, Hypertension and Kidney Disease in Ghana. And I explain all of these for want of time. We will not be able to go into the details, but please find these articles and then read them if you find the time. Diabetes, the world over, diabetes is the number one cause of kidney disease. Now, the key is that if you have diabetes, your risk of kidney disease is actually so high. And that is why there's always the need to ensure that your diabetes is super controlled. Now, it's not just a matter of taking medication. It's a matter of taking medication and ensuring that your blood pressure is controlled. That is key. That is how you can prevent kidney disease. But if you don't take medication, uh, then, of course, the diabetes is not controlled. It affects your kidneys. It affects your eye. It affects your brain. And sometimes it gives you a, a stroke also. So diabetes, in whatever form, is not so good. And that is why we should be mindful about diabetes. And again, I wrote an article about diabetes and kidney disease in Ghana, where it is clear that about 7% of Ghanaians have diabetes, and their risk of kidney disease is actually very, very high. Please... Please mute yourself so you don't disturb us, please. As much as possible, let's keep our, 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 our minds muted. All right. And then sometimes there are some filtration problems also uh, with the kidney. So it so happens that um, for the host help by muting these people so we can and discuss this. All right. So now the problem is that when the feeding apparatus of the kidney is not working, and uh, Nanai Shira, could you mute yourself, please? Nanai Shira, could you please mute yourself? Thank you. All right. So when you have a serious problem with your kidney, sometimes you have kids who will come and then they have, their eyes are all swollen and all. And now the point is that they are leaking a lot of protein in their urine, which eventually causes them to have kidney disease. Um, let me please mention, if you want to listen, please mute yourself so we can all hear each other. Please, please. It's so distracting. All right. And then the use of painkillers. So most people would use a lot of painkillers. My knee is paining me. My joint pain, uh, my waist is paining. And they just go to the pharmacy shop, grab on over-the-counter pain medications, and they keep abusing. You are increasing your risk of kidney disease. And having said that, Again, there's an article on medications and kidney disease in Ghana. So let's be on the lookout. Herbal medication, herbal medication, herbal medication. They keep branding that, oh, if it is um, um, uh, natural, it is safe. What I say is that banana is very, is natural, right? The peel of the banana is also natural. But for some reason, when we are eating banana, we eat the fruit and we dump the skin away. Why? Because we don't think that the peel is good for us. Likewise, if it's something is natural, it doesn't necessarily mean it is safe. And more importantly, not as safe for your kidneys as you think. So what I'm going to say is that when people are talking about herbal medications, please be mindful that some of them can cause kidney disease. They are not as safe as they are branded to be. I'll repeat it. They are not as safe as they are branded to be. And again, I wrote an article on the effect of herbal medication use on the kidneys in Ghana. That was published about four, about four years ago. So find time. I think it's still available online. And read it, please. 
And now, sometimes the kidney is able to make the urine, but for some reason, the urine is not able to come out of the body, i.e. there's an obstruction somewhere. So you have the fact that the urine is blocked, and when it is blocked, it tends to destroy the kidneys with time. What are some of the things that will cause it? Like I mentioned, males above 40, 50, 60 onwards, when our prostates are becoming enlarged, they prevent the urine from coming out uh, freely. And sometimes when they are left behind over a period of time, they go back and they destroy the kidney, or sometimes they keep forming, uh, causing infections, which can also what? Destroy the kidney. So that is also very important for us to know. Then again, the, the, the kidney stones. Kidney stones are also very common indeed. The, the usual age for kidney stones is between 20 and 40, where people are busy going about the activities. They don't have time to drink uh, enough water and all. And kidney stones can cause an obstruction and eventually can affect your kidneys. Obesity, 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 and kidney disease in Ghana. 2017, in fact, it was our theme for World Kidney Day, where we talked about obesity and the kidney. And indeed, obesity has been associated with kidney disease. So please, if you become too big, if you are growing too fat, it's not because your wife or husband is taking care of you or you are living well. Be mindful that your risk of kidney disease is increasing. Your risk of hypertension is increasing. Your risk of diabetes is increasing. Of course, your risk of stroke and all. So obesity is not a good thing. And that's why we may need to exercise to burn this fat. Alcohol intake, yes, moderation is not a problem, but excess alcohol intake, you are addicted to it and you keep taking alcohol your risk of kidney disease also what increases. Again, I have an article on alcohol consumption and how amazing uh, people take a lot of alcohol here in this country. And indeed, nowadays, there are all sorts of concoctions that are branded as alcohol and they put all sorts of aphrodisiacs and all. You know them, they have all these interesting names. The key is that we should be watchful about these things because it might have effect on our kidneys. You have a heart problem. You have a liver problem. Trust me, your risk of kidney disease also increases. I have mentioned that HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, all these infections, we know hepatitis B so well to affect the liver. We know hepatitis C so well to affect the liver. This day, I'm here to let you know that it doesn't only affect the liver, it affects the kidneys also. HIV likewise affects their kidneys also. And sometimes they spew a lot of protein in their urine. It is progressive and it's not reversible, more especially when you are, they are not taking their HIV um, medications. Sickle cell is also very common as a cause of kidney disease, and that is why we should be mindful about it. 2% of our population have sickle cell disease. As they age and they 20, 25, most of them are at increased risk of kidney disease because of the fact that they keep circling and those circles go into the kidneys and block those important vessels in the kidney, and with time, they have problems with their kidneys. Cancer, any form of cancer that you know, sometimes for the sake of the cancer itself or for the sake of the medications that are used to treat the cancer increases your risk. So if you're a cancer patient or you know somebody with cancer, anytime they are going for their chemo, they would ask them to do a kidney function test or do liver function test because of the effect of some of these uh, medications on the kidney and the liver. Now the question is, how do I know that I have kidney disease? Don't wait for symptoms. In fact, this is actually one of my very exciting slides. If you are waiting to see, oh, I have this, I have that, before I think that, oh, I could have kidney disease, it will be too late. My advice is that ensure that you know your kidney functions at all times. And again, it is very important that you know that the kidney has the ability to take care of you so well. When its functions are dropping, it will not show you any sign. It's a good thing. But because of that, people don't uh, uh, take care of themselves. If it was showing signs early, it probably would have been helpful, but it doesn't. And they would wait until it gets to the end stages, less than 15%, and then it begins to show symptoms. So I liken it to the mobile phone, like you see it. If you charge up your mobile phone, like I have here, up to let's say 100% in the morning, you keep making your calls, you keep talking, chatting, having Zoom conferences and all. As the battery is running down, if you don't look at the phone to know that, oh, it has gotten to this time, before you realize, it gets to 10%, 15 20 depending on the kind of phone you are using. And the phone will say, what, low battery or charge or whatever it is that it tells you. Now, this is how exactly the kidney works. But unfortunately, the kidney, like the, unlike the mobile phone, the kidney has no charger. So unfortunately, when you run to 10%, you are actually in trouble because now eventually that's why you become sick. That's why you now feel very awful. And that is why we will say that you need to be on dialysis. 
if we are having this conversation, it's actually because I need you to know about kidney disease and prevent it so you don't get to 10%. And indeed, if you already are in 10%, like I said, our theme is about what? Living well with kidney disease. And we are going to discuss how to do that. Yes, if in case it shows you symptoms, what are some of the symptoms that you see? Sometimes your urine is very frothy, like I have the urine in this uh, bowl. It can also be a bit bloody. You have a bit of blood in your urine. Your urine is actually supposed to be this clear and just a bit yellowish. But sometimes you have it like blood. Sometimes you have it like Coca-Cola. If you are getting all of these things, that means your kidneys are in big trouble. More often than not, sometimes you pee a couple of times in the night. When I'm saying this, if you've drank a lot of water or something in the night before you went to sleep and you pee a couple of times, that is okay. But if it's, this is becoming very frequent and you realize that, ah, I've not drank a lot. I didn't go for a party to drink a lot, but I'm peeing more often. Be mindful of kidney disease. But nonetheless, other conditions like diabetes, infection in your urine, and all can also show, in fact, prostate issues can also show with this frequency, frequency of urination at night. And then sometimes your urine volume at night also what? And your urine volume generally decreases. These are all signs of kidney disease. Your heart can now also be affected because the heart can give, it can give hypertension, like I mentioned. Your heart can become enlarged. Sometimes our patients become breathless. They cannot breathe. And that is why we say that they may need to now go on dialysis for us to take fluid out of them. And then their feet are swollen more often. And again, in their belly, sometimes they are complaining about abdominal pain. They are not able to eat. They are pushing their food away. They are having nausea and vomiting. Sometimes their bellies are becoming big um, like this. And even, in fact, sometimes their feet is also swollen, like I mentioned, or they are pack, passing very dark uh, stools, uh, what we call uh, malina stools. So all of these things are showing that the disease is advanced. Don't wait for all of these things because it means that things are too late. They cannot lie flat. They cannot breathe. They easily get tired. They just, they get to work by nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. They are sleeping or they are so tired and they are coughing a lot. And sometimes when they cough, they see blood in their cough. All of these things are signs that you may have kidney disease. I would say that other conditions can do this, but the kidney disease in this advanced stages can also do this. So let's be on the lookout. When things are getting out of hand and it affects the brain, they are feeling very dizzy. They cannot sleep at night. And indeed, sometimes they can have seizures. So they are like shaking or sometimes they go into coma. If nothing is done, then death ensues. And that is why we are having this conversation. I, I don't want you to die. Um, are you scared? <laughs> are you scared? But I am, I, am, I am not here to put a lot of fear in you uh, because I am a, a Christian and I believe so well in the Bible that in 2 Timothy 1, 20, 1 verse 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, uh, but the uh, power of love and sound mind. The key is that I'm not here to put fear in you. I'm here to give you knowledge that you will prevent harmful things from happening to your kidneys. So having said that, Doc, what do we do? All right, what do we do? Let's assess our risk. That is very important. Assess your risk to know what your risks are. And with this, I advise that know your numbers. As you walk around as any human being on this earth, it is not just your shoe size. And if you are female, your bra size or your, your whatever size that you know that you, are, you should be interested in. But I guess that you should be interested in your numbers. What numbers am I talking about? Your blood pressure, your sugar, your weight, your height, your kidney function in terms of percentage. If you know these things, when they go out of hand or they are getting out of hand, then your doctor can compare it to something and be able to say, oh, listen, some time ago, your kidney function was at 80%. Now it's gone to 60. What is going on? You are still well, but we find out what is going on and we push you back to your 80 and everybody is happy. If we don't watch it, that's when we run into trouble. So I advise that take a day in the year. So like you can take World Kidney Day. So within this month of Healthy Kidney Month, find time to check your kidney function. So Silvanus is on the call. He'll throw numbers at you. You can probably just call and they would advise you on what to do. Have a medical birthday. So you can actually choose your birthday. Instead of eating junk food on your birthday, I would advise rather that you take that as an opportunity to check your kidney function, check your blood pressure, check your sugar. So when all of these things are deranged, they can be corrected. And indeed, it will help a great deal. Let's get tested. Simple test, a urine test will do the trick. Checking your blood for what we call creatinine will do the trick. Doing a, a checking your blood pressure, like I mentioned, is in, important. The moment the blood pressures are checked and they are high, we check the kidney functions and they are fine. It means we are good to go. And this is actually very, very important. So check your blood pressure. Don't ignore it. 
Don't say, oh, I am too young. Like I said, I have 16 year olds. I have 17 year olds. I have six year olds. I have seven year olds who are actually having kidney disease. Indeed, not long ago, we had a seven year old. We have to start here on dialysis. Come on, guys. And that lady, that very young seven year old, had a very high blood pressure. It's, um, it's amazing. So let's be on the lookout for hypertension because in Ghana, for instance, about one out of four of us have hypertension. Indeed, some studies we've done recently even showed that one out of three, about 33% of Ghanaians have high blood pressure. And that is why you need to check your blood pressure. So if we are about 100 on the call, you can do the math yourself. And then an ultrasound of the kidneys will help us to know what is going on with your kidneys. Now, the kidney disease is in various stages, like I mentioned. It could be very normal. It could have malfunction, a reduction. It could moderately reduce and eventually severe where they need dialysis to survive. And that is what I'm talking about. When they get to what? The less than 15%. Let's not get to less than 15%. Let's maintain ourselves in the blue, not in the reds. Because when you get into the reds, unfortunately, you are going to need dialysis. So now, to the crust of the matter, how do we prevent kidney disease? How do we prevent kidney disease? Water is life, my children will say. So let's drink a lot of water to be able to maintain our kidneys. Drinking a lot of water helps your kidneys to function, in fact, function well because it reduces its effect. Because your kidney, like I said, helps you to concentrate urine. So if you are not uh, uh, keeping yourself dehydrated or keeping yourself with less water in the system, then it is free to let you pee more. And the more you pee, the better for your kidneys. And again, let's eat well. Now look at this dish. I'm seeing a lot of greens and reds and yellows and all, and it's covering over 15% of this dish. And your carbo is probably about just 25%, and then you're probably your chicken and stuff will take the rest. Unfortunately, here in Ghana, the food is all about carbo. You ask somebody, what did you eat this morning? They say rice. What did you eat in the afternoon? I ate fufu. What are we going to eat in the evening? I'm going to eat bangu. In fact, the name of the food is actually on the carbohydrate. But nonetheless, when you go to a restaurant or something, the key is that they ask you what the dish is, and the dish is actually your sauce you are eating, right? And then they ask, do you want to add chips, or do you want to add rice, or do you want to add fried rice? So the, the, the carbohydrate is supposed to be the accompaniment, not the main dish. But here in Ghana, it is the other way around. We eat the fufu, and it's only the fufu that we are eating. Plenty carbo is a problem. Salt, salt, salt. Ghanaians love salt. Too much salt is linked to hypertension. You may have a mother or a father or yourself. You've been told you have hypertension. And the first thing your doctor told you is to cut down on your salt, right? Now, the key is that I will not wait for you to get hypertension before I tell you to cut down on your salt. I would advise you to cut down on your salt now to prevent the hypertension because I believe it's the way to go. Now, smoking. Please, smoking affects the brain. It affects the lungs. It affects the heart. It affects virtually every organ in the body, including the kidneys. Alcohol, I have mentioned already, please let's not be tied down to alcohol and drink ourselves to death because alcohol can also cause brain issues. It can cause heart problems. It can cause liver problems, more importantly, and it can also affect kidney disease. And let's keep moving. We have become a generation of sitters. We are always sitting. We are not exercising. We are not moving. We wake up in the morning, we sit in our car, sit in our offices, sit back in our cars, sit back in our rooms, and we don't work. In fact, there are phone apps now that will even give you a fair idea of how many steps you have taken in a day. And most of you, probably the whole day, you probably would not have taken even a hundred steps because you don't move. You are the MD of your company. So your, your parking lot is the best. It is two steps from your office. And indeed, when you sit in the office, anything you need, you call your secretary. Let's be on the lookout because what we are getting for ourselves is obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and kidney disease. Let's use the uh, elevator. Uh, let's use uh, the stairs instead of using the elevator or the lift because all of this is good exercise. Now, avoid all these medications. Indeed, don't abuse painkillers. Don't abuse medications. Don't just take medications for fun. And that is why you always need to see your doctor than just going to a pharmacy to take medications. Elsewhere, if you don't have a prescription, you don't get medication. Here, it is all about business. So anytime they work in, I need this, they are given. I need that, they are given. And most of these over-the-counter medications can harm your kidneys. Not to talk about, of course, I've talked about herbal medications. And indeed, I chose this slide. There's a slide I just chose at random on Google. And you actually realize that it is a herbal product, but they are listing side effects. Here in Ghana, when they talk about herbal product, they say, hey, as for herbal product, they are pure, they are clean. They don't have any side effects. 
That is not true. And if it is, it is branded as medication, it has side effects. And what betides you if it is hitting your kidneys? You are likely to go on to dialysis. And talking about dialysis, this is my favorite person. Unfortunately, he's not with us. Um, uh, Mr. Yabakofi, um, he was an advocate of kidney disease. He was a kidney disease patient himself, and he liked to prevent people from getting it. You can see how he looked and then how he looked like when he was on dialysis, lost a lot of weight, was not eating well. But trust me, with his little energy, anytime I go on, uh, on the air, anytime I go on radio or wherever I go to, if a kidney disease, anytime we talk about kidney disease, he would want to have a bite to advise people because he keeps saying that he didn't want people to go through what he's going through. May his soul rest in perfect peace. He died last year somewhere in April. May his soul rest in perfect peace. And he, I am echoing all the things he would want you to hear that prevent yourself from ki getting kidney disease. And his situation was that he goes to the hospital, his blood pressures were high and it was not controlled until he was referred to us and we realized that the kidneys were gone. And that is why I have written this book, How to Prevent Kidney Disease, where I list the 10 most important things everyone should know about their kidneys. It has no big jargons, simple language that you would be able to understand. And it's not a big book. I mean, I know Ghanaians don't read. So it's a very tiny book that actually contains all you need. And I'm actually doing a promo uh, this month of May. It used to go for 30 cities. In this month of May, and sorry, this month of March, because of World Kidney Day, Healthy Kidney Month, with 20 cities, you get a copy. So you, again, you can link up with Silvanus if you want a copy of this, because I believe it will touch somebody and it will, you, can, you can buy it for yourself, buy it for a friend and let them keep it and read it. We need to know about our health. And I talk about most of these things I'm talking about here uh, because I wrote it myself. Again, it is all about Kidney Health International. We are promoting kidney health in Ghana and beyond. We want you to be empowered with knowledge so then you will prevent kidney disease. I am bringing my talk to a close. Kidney disease is more common than we think. And indeed, it is mostly without symptoms. So let's not sit and wait for symptoms. Oh, I want to see this, I want to see that. It will delude you. And by the time you get the symptoms, things will be late and out of hand. So let's be on the lookout. And I believe that it's all about prevention. Prevention is key. And these are the few things I have told you on how you can prevent a kidney disease. And again, even if you have it, early detection is very important because we can prevent you from getting onto dialysis. And then finally, the cost of treatment is enormous. It is very expensive to get yourself on dialysis. It is very expensive to get a transplant. It's very difficult to get a relative to decide to donate for you. So my humble plea is that let's take very good care of ourselves so we don't develop kidney disease in the first place to become a burden to ourselves and our families so that we can become productive to be able to move the Ghana agenda forward. Having said that, God bless you all and I'll leave the rest of the time for all your questions. Thank you very much. Over to you, Silvanus. All right, thank you very much, Doctor. And uh, thank, thank you very much, attendance. Um, attendance has been good and it's been on the high side and we are impressed. So for, for now, Doctor, there are lots of questions. People are asking how they can... Hello, Silvanus. Silvanus, are you alive? Doctor, I'm alive. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. <laughs> All right. So what I'm saying is this. A uh, lot of questions are coming concerning how people want to get the books. Um, some okay. are also asking straightforward questions about how uh, they can get their kidneys checked. And I'm sure that these are straightforward questions. Uh, we do not have too many technical ones as, so for now, um, except with the books and uh, how people can get their kidneys checked. Some are also asking about lead. Uh, what, what is it that can lead to kidney disease? I'm sure you put that in the presentation. Probably they yeah. missed it. Yeah. Uh, so if you could just go over that for them, and I'm sure we'll be ending. Okay. So um, how they can... Um, so I think I'll take the, the cost. You talked about the courses, right? So I think I'll, I'll be excited if we get about three or so questions, and I try and take them, and then we move on to the next three. You are breaking at a point. I couldn't get everything. So, Manus, are you with us? All right. So, I think so. So, if I heard him right, I think he mentioned that people are interested in uh, getting the book and all. So, he would uh, send a link or how, on how you get the book in the chat box. So, um, just take note. 
And then somebody talked about how they can get kidney disease and all. So I think I'll just quickly. So I mentioned that the common ones are diabetes, the hypertension, and the fact that uh, people are taking a lot of painkillers and they are not even going uh, taking prescription drugs. And uh, again, people are also not drinking a lot of water. And again, people are having infections like HIV and hepatitis B and C. And again, like I mentioned, the risk can actually happen because you were born with low, low numbers of in terms of your kidney uh, cells. And that is why you run into all these troubles. We've talked about alcohol. We've talked about smoking. We've talked about uh, herbal medications and, of course, orthodox medications. So I think if Silvanus can hear me, I'm hoping I got all your questions at a point. Okay, so I think if you are not hearing Silvano, so maybe if that will not be a bother, um, maybe you can throw your questions in the chat box. Or what I will suggest is that maybe uh, James will also help uh, coordinate also by just unmuting yourself, just asking your question, or somebody needs to coordinate this, or else the whole place will be very, very noisy. So can you put in your questions in the chat box? And then I can read them myself if Silvanus is not connected. All right, so I'm just going through the chat box now. Um, okay, so I think from the beginning, it's all about the noise that was coming, some how people can get, all right. So how can painkiller usage lead to kidney disease? Yeah, so like I mentioned, if you take painkillers for a long period of time, the way the painkillers work, eventually it causes less blood flow to go into your kidney. So if you keep taking it and sometimes not drinking enough water, then I'm afraid you will run into kidney problems. So it is very important that even if you, for some reason, you need to take painkillers, please, please, please ensure you are drinking a lot of water. But the, the key advice is that always ensure that your kidney functions are in the nose. So you know your kidney functions, because like I mentioned, there are some medications that will not be good for you if you, your kidney functions are reduced, okay? So I think that is how um, it is. Okay, somebody is asking how, um, they can get a copy of the book. All right. So I think that Silvanus will sort out. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so type in your questions, um, like I said. And uh, uh, how does one get a recording of this session? All right. So when we are done, we actually will put it on our Facebook uh, wall so you can uh, actually go uh, watch it again. So don't worry. Silvanus um, is the key person who handle it. Um, what effect has too much water on the kidneys? Very. Thank you very much, Doris. So the kidneys, in fact, too in fact, be careful what you call too much water, all right? So now sometimes when I, somebody says, okay, what is too much water? And they say, oh, if I drink about two liters of water, and I go like, no, two liters of water is not too much water. Oh, it's okay, three liters of water. So three liters of water is not too much water. The point is that normally, like I said, if your kidneys are functioning, even if you drink excess water, all you do is that you pee excessively. excessively and then um, what will happen is that eventually things will correct. You might, yes, sometimes get some electrolyte abnormalities when it's too much. You are probably drinking, let's say, about seven liters or eight liters and all. But I have transplant patients who are drinking about 5.5 liters, some about even six liters and all, and they don't come with those electrolyte problems. Rather, their kidney functions are really maintained. So I don't know what you call too much water, but I would always advise for you to drink a lot of water. Here in Ghana, because we sweat a lot and all, I advise that everybody should drink at least six sashi, so six of the sashi, or six of the small vortex or two of the big ones at least because then that will free your kidneys and your urine will become as clear as water that means that your kidney is not stressed when you stress your kidneys it gets tired it gives up on you i don't want the kidneys to get tired to give up on you okay all right so and then now somebody is asking um ad how can hepatitis b viral infection cause kidney disease thank you very much when you get hepatitis b the viruses are able to get to the kidney. Now, they destroy the filters. If you remember the sieve, the filter that I mentioned, they destroy the filter. And when they destroy the filter, the proteins will be leaking into your urine. When the proteins leak into your urine, anytime your proteins leaking into your urine, unfortunately, it destroys more of the kidneys. So it starts off as this cycle. And then now, some of the kidneys are destroyed. There are less um, of the kidneys working. And eventually, the rest that is left keeps being destroyed. So it is spew a lot of protein in their urine and eventually they get kidney disease. So hepatitis B viral infection is not just a problem for the liver, it's also a problem for the kidney. Doc, please, any event happening on Saturday? Yes, there's an event happening on 
on yeah. Saturday. So we're actually doing a, a screening. In fact, so if you are somewhere in Kumasi, we actually chose um, a very uh, remote area where people cannot afford a lot of things. And we are going to check blood pressure. We are checking uh, diabetes. We are checking their urine. We are checking for kidney function. And we are advising them. They will not be able to do Zoom calls like this soon. So we are trying to approach them to be able to sort them out also. So that is what is happening. So it's a free uh, kidney health screening by Kidney Health International for the people of Esofwa. If you are really around and you want to come fair, we'll be happy to have you. So, and uh, follow our Facebook uh, page also. We'll be uh, uh, throwing more details um, there. All right, so somebody's saying good job. Thank you. Uh, today, an uncle was just diagnosed of a tumor uh, of his kidney and he's 78. Any advice? Hmm. That, that is a tough one. What I would advise is that indeed, whoever diagnosed likely has the ability to manage. If they cannot, they should refer to somebody who can manage well, because again, it depends on what tumor they are talking about. So sometimes we need a CT scan to find out what it is. If it's something that the surgeons can remove for the kidneys to be good, fine. If it's something that has gone beyond removal, there are medications that of course will prevent um, him from getting uh, worse. So I think his doctors would advise. Please doc, uh, one of those with low BP, does it also have effect on the kidneys? Indeed, when your BPs are low, it depends on your body size. I know of young, slim ladies, in fact, they are weighing about 35, 40 kilograms, and then they are worried about the fact that their BPs are low. That BP is just good enough to power your body. That's what it means. Now, sometimes when you are growing and you're becoming bigger, then your BPs go up to be able to power it. And of course, when it goes beyond a particular point, that is why we run into trouble. So when their BPs are low. And sometimes if you, if you say low, if you are doing, if you are not too big and you are doing BPs of what, um, 160 or 115 or 110 and all, for me, that, that is fine. If you are not sick and you have low BP and your body size is commensurate, don't worry about it. Rather, I worry so much about when the BPs are high. On the other hand, if a patient is seen on admission where they have an infection and their BPs are going low, then we know that it's actually now not the normal BP for them. So indeed, we need to bring the BPs up to be able to power the kidneys for their kidneys to function well. Because if their BPs are low, then it actually affects their kidney function. But nonetheless, if you are normal, then my assumption is that your blood pressures are good for you. So don't wish it to be any higher. Um, and now somebody is asking how many, um, let me see that I don't miss somebody. Yes, how many glasses of water should a normal person? So if your glasses are, let's say, about 300 uh, mils, or let's say about 250 mils, like I mentioned, then you need, um, so about, let's say three liters, that comes to about eight glasses or so of water uh, per day. But again, if we use the sachet, which most people are able to um, 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 identify with, or the small um, uh, water containers, I mean, I don't need to mention brands, they've not sponsored anything, but uh, those containers, then the point is that the small one, let's say is about 500, you need about six of those um, to be able to uh, function well. So let's drink more, and again, if you have diarrhea or you are vomiting or you are sweating a lot or for some reason you you have lost some fluid from your body then you may need to uh, drink even a bit more all right so um i think the next question is okay um i think i've done the two more question oh there are a lot of questions coming Silvanus, if you are back you can help me coordinate these questions huh? um all right please uh imad the uh, hands been up for a while please uh, let her speak all right, so I hear uh, somebody's hands are up. Uh, maybe if they can unmute themselves and speak. I'm hoping they just unmute and then uh, mute and then we can go on. So, Vanus, can you coordinate the chat? All right, so let me go on, please. How can uh, tonsillitis cause kidney disease? When you have tonsillitis, it means you have inflammation of your tonsils. If you have infection of the tonsils and probably you are not eating or drinking well, or the infection itself gets into blood, and sometimes, yes, it can affect your kidneys. It is a bit far-fetched, but sometimes it can. But one that what is more worrying is when you have sore throat, so not tonsillitis in itself. When we have sore throat, what we call the strep infection. Those infections sometimes can directly, uh, through the antigens and all that they produce, affect the kidneys, and you have the children coming with high blood pressure, you have them coming with their faces swelling and all from the infection in the throat. So throat infection, Sometimes, yes, can lead to kidney um, injuries or kidney uh, glomerulonephritis, we call it. And also, um, somebody is asking, um, 
take lime. Hey, somebody's advising about lime and all for what? Okay, I'm not sure. All right. Um, diagnose. Uh, when you are diagnosed with kidney stone, at what point can you be told um you are you are doing okay? Right. So kidney stones are actually a problem of drinking less water. That's the key. So let's drink more water. I think that is the most important thing. Now, two. When the kidney stones um, are seen, it depends on the size of the stone. The bigger the stone, then you probably may need surgery to take it out. But if your stone is very small, typically less than 0 0.7, some even push it up to 0 point, uh, uh, 0 0.9 and even one centimeter, then you have the ability to pass that stone yourself. But if it's beyond one centimeter, then more often than not, you will not be able to pass the stone. So a scan would have to be done to be sure whether you passed it. If you're not passed it, you may need to see the urologist to help that one out. All right, now somebody is asking, um, let me, somebody is asking now um, about preeclampsia and eclampsia. Um, yes, so pregnancy and kidney disease is actually very linked. And now the point is that if for some reason, if you get pregnant and your blood pressures are going up and for that matter, you have protein in your urine, it has direct effect on the kidneys, direct, direct effect. I may have to, I have to dialyze women who have to uh, who get preeclampsia immediately they deliver or when they are about getting um, to delivery and then the point is that sometimes they recover that's the good news about just the preeclampsia affecting the kidneys they recover uh, very whole, uh, in fully and um, in fact they they recover because it's just an acute kidney injury but in most situations sometimes they may have underlying kidney disease um, which sometimes will lead to delay in the recovery and sometimes they don't so yes uh, eclampsia and preeclampsia can definitely affect the kidneys. So let's be in the know. Uh, please, Doug, what of those with, okay, I think I've answered that one already. Um, all right, uh, please, um, a normal urine test, a good sign of good function, yes. So when you do your urine test and it's clean and you take your blood sample and it is clean, then chances are that your kidneys are doing well. Uh, Silvanus Lai wants to know what's my name on uh, Facebook page. So the name, I have a lot of the pages. So my name itself is Elliot Grant Internal. You can go there. Kidney Health International is also another page. Kidney Consult is another page. And indeed, if in fact, if you go just Google, uh, if you type in the name Elliot Grant Internal, anything kidney, you are sure to have it. So I think, yes, Sylvanus has answered that. Kidney Health International is also one of our pages. Okay, I think I've done that. Um, Doc, how often should we add lemon to our drinking water? Indeed, I would say that it is not just a matter of just adding lemon to the water. Yes, lemon is an alkaline. It is good for various things, but don't, don't be targeting the lemon alone. Just be targeting the drinking of the water. Basic things, I believe, are the key to the solution. Yes, if you like lemon, you can add uh, to it and all, but then the key is that please drink more. And if that lemon is not making the water palatable for you to drink, then maybe it's not even helping you. But my advice is that Drink the water that you are comfortable to drink uh, with. Uh, you, are, you are comfortable to drink because that is key. Um, contact details for um, Doug's book, please. Um, so again, um, Sylvanus, I'm not sure you are with um, us here, uh, but please, you can type the number they can reach you on uh, for the book. And then I think they'll be uh, ready to have it. So Sylvanus saying those interested can join our Facebook group called uh, Kidney uh, Healthy Kidneys. And I think Sylvanus has just added a number to it. So you can also uh, take the notes of the number now and you can reach Sylvanus and he will sort you out. And then again, uh, somebody is asking, Doc, please, if your renal function tests are good and a slight hitch with urine tests like protein is in it, how safe uh, is your kidney? Yeah. So if your kidney function is good, hallelujah. If we find that there's a bit of protein, there are various reasons why you would have some protein in your urine. And some of the reasons are the fact that there could be infection some of the reasons are the fact that there could be other uh, uh, things that are going on in your kidney. If it, is, if it is persistent, we call it. So you do the depth take now, there's protein. You keep doing it, there's protein. Then we investigate to find out if this is something that will bother. I'll personally quantify the protein to know whether the, the amount is significant enough for us to worry about. But nonetheless, we'll check your kidney function again and we'll repeat it and we'll see the trend. Check your blood pressure, check your sugar, check the other things that can also cause protein to be in your urine. If all of those things are fine, we'll just monitor you for a while to ensure you don't get any untoward effect on your kidney. So I think that is uh, very important. So um, I am hoping I've been able to sort all the questions out. In case I have not answered your question yet, or you have another question, we still have some five minutes on the clock. You can throw them in, and then I'll be happy to answer because post eight o'clock, I think the call will end. So any more questions for... Uh, myself uh, to answer. 
today um, on firing squad. You can just fire all your questions. But nonetheless, if for some reason you are not able to type your questions, so get onto the page, Kidney Health International, Kidney Consult, Healthy Kidneys, or even my own uh, personal page, Elliot Grant Internal. Throw your question there, um, and we'll be able we'll be able to even answer you even after the call um, is 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 over. So if there are no uh, further questions, um, I'll probably leave, wait for a minute or so if there will be any further questions. All right, somebody is asking. There are people who say they naturally do not wee wee a lot except at night. Now, if you if you are somebody who only pees in the night but not much in the day, I worry. I mean, a bit, and I would uh, urge you to find time in the course of this week or course of this month to just check your kidney function, because one of the ways by which, like I mentioned, kidney disease presents is where people are not able uh, 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 peeing a lot at night and less in the day because they have lost the concentrating ability of their kidney. So please don't take that one uh, for granted, please. If you are just at night and not much in the day. All right, and now somebody is saying, please, uh, does Noni ha have an effect on the kidneys? I'm not sure exactly what Noni is. If you could even uh, explain it, I have a feeling it's a brand something. I don't know what it is. But the point is that the key message is that if you are taking anything, and you don't know its effect on your kidneys, you may as well avoid it. If you have any doubts in any medication, I tell my patients, when they go and anybody gives them any medication that they are not sure of, they should come and show it to me for me to okay it before they can take it. Because it's better to be safe than to be sorry. All right, so I'm not sure what Nuni is. So if somebody can explain what Nuni is, maybe I can see if I can answer that. All right, so uh, hello, Doc, please. Um, a postmenopausal woman seeing blood and protein in her, in her um, blood and protein in her urine, I should say, uh, you are trying to say on dipstick. Is it alarming? Yes, yeah, so if you are postmenopausal, one, you probably should, of course, not be menstruating again. So we should not be seeing any blood in and around that area. If you are getting a bit of blood in your urine, I, I would worry. I would probably seek some care to be ensure to be sure that I'm not missing anything because like we said that age group is a risk factor in itself for kidney disease and if I'm seeing some protein in there I'm seeing some blood in there I don't know uh, techno uh, come on whether the person uh, has hypertension or diabetes so if there are more risk factors I personally would worry and ensure that I check the kidney function to ensure that everything is uh, fine all right so um, all right so uh, Doris is saying thanks for the lecture Noni is a plant, all right. So Noni is a plant, he's saying. So it would be good for me to know what kind of plant it is. But if it is branded as one of these herbal extracts and all, oh, I will be careful. I think that's all I would say, but I don't know exactly what plant it is. Uh, doctor, does dandelion juice help in cleansing the kidneys? Please, please, please be careful about anything that is branded detoxifying, cleansing, detoxifying, cleansing. Most of these ones, if you are not careful, depending on what your kidney functions are, they end up even causing more toxins to your kidney. So be careful. Now, people have know that you know less about kidney disease, and that is why we are doing some of these things. So you have knowledge. And now they brand all sorts of medications, and they talk about all sorts of things to entice you. This will cleanse your body. It will cleanse your kidney. It will cleanse your this. It will cleanse your that. And they sell all sorts of things to you. Please be careful. Most of those things are just marketing gimmicks. Marketing gimmicks. So let's just be careful, all right? Okay. So, uh, Doc, that's... Um, does um, ovulation and menstruation have effect on urine production? Because I have less urine during my period. More often than not, maybe during your periods, likely maybe you are in a lot of pain and you are not eating very well, you are anxious and all of that, so you are not drinking a lot. But maybe you can put this to a test. Maybe during your menses, if you can, drink a lot of water. Let's see whether or not you'll be able to pee a lot. Because I have a feeling because you are losing a bit of blood, you may need to take a bit more to be able to make more urine. So I advise that you drink more during your menses. If someone uh, with kidney disease, uh, if, if someone with kidney disease uh, taking cell GBT, hmm, again, talk to your doctor be, and be careful. Now, if you need any supplements, we write special supplements based on what you, we think is good for you and the function of your kidney at that level. Most of these things, they've not studied them when your kidney functions are low. So when you take them, then you run into more problems with your kidney function. So I'll stay off and try and try and play safe actually with my doctor 
to make sure that they are doing the right things for me and following my kidney function than just going on social media and having people brand all sort of medications and entice you to buy them and all which will run into more uh, problems. All right, so I have another question. Um, all right, so I could see a die Mensa. Uh, Morinda Costume is a fruit bearing tree. Okay, um, this native range across South Africa and was spread across. Okay, so I think he's trying to give us some uh, information on the Nuni. All right, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. So Nuni has been well explained. Uh, glutathione has been uh, taken a lot these days. Okay, so somebody, uh, Sylvanus is talking about glutathione. Uh, please, doctor, that's coughing. Um, excessively affect the, your kidneys. Oh no, oh no. Coughing plenty does not. My, my worry is why are you coughing? I am hoping you don't have an infection in your lung or probably you don't have COVID or you don't have another reason why you are coughing, but coughing does not affect the kidneys, okay? But I will still be interested in why you are coughing. All right. Um, oh, now somebody saying, I don't know, Niba, because of the pressure, I have forgotten. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. So our time is eight. I'll just try and finish up. Please, uh, Doc, what's your take on drinking coconut uh, has tea uh, soaked in hot water? All right. Coconut is fantastic. Coconut is really good. Coconut has a lot of potassium, but provided your kidney functions are good. Now, the point is that when your kidney functions are low, then your potassium cannot come out of your body like we know it. And that's why you run into trouble. So most people with kidney disease, we actually tell them actually to avoid um, a lot of coconut because of the potassium it contains. But in any case, if you have um, 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 normal kidney function, then you can take a lot of coconut, you can take a lot of banana, and all of these things are very, very good for you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jazz Hammond. You, okay, so Jazz is saying that uh, we are uh, grateful, Doc. It's been very good. Thank you very much, uh, Jazz, for joining. And thank you all for joining. All right, so... Um, Doc, uh, does painkillers affect our kidneys? In fact, I spent minutes talking about painkillers and what they can do to your kidneys. Yes, they do affect the kidneys, so be very careful about uh, painkillers. Um, so don't abuse painkillers, please, please, please. All right, so I think our time is up, and I think I may have to attend to other things. So thank you very much uh, for joining. If Sylvanus is on the call, probably you can actually uh, round us up. But thank you very much uh, for joining. We are so privileged that when we throw invitations, uh, you come and indeed to have people over 100 at a point on the call to listen to me blah, blah, blah about kidney disease. I think it is exciting. And keep following us on social media, uh, Kidney Health International, Elliot Crunch Internal, Kidney Consult, Healthy Kidney. In fact, get into that group. And there's a lot of information. I try to throw as much information as my time will allow me and to just make sure that you are empowered to know so much about kidney disease so we can prevent kidney disease because it's a so alarming a condition. There's very little information about it. And that's why people are taking advantage to sell all sorts of drugs to you, all sorts of medications to you, which in my opinion, sometimes make things worse. So thank you very much uh, for, for joining. And I have a feeling in the course of time, we'll throw some of these things again to uh, help us. And again, throw all your comments that you are not able to do here on our Facebook wall, on our pages, and we'll have time to attend to all of you to ensure that we promote kidney health in Ghana and beyond. Thank you very much, and you have a good evening. God bless you all.